everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Kazem and today I'm going to be showing you my September setup in my bullet journal. For the month of September I decided to do Pocahontas as my theme and if you're new to my channel, basically every month of this year I am doing an official Disney princess as my theme because there are 12 official Disney princesses and this month is Pocahontas. So this is one of the quickest setups I have done in terms of the Disney princess themes and I don't know why these paintings were just so much quicker for me but they were. I really love this cover page. Basically if you guys remember at the end of the movie she's standing there on that cliff while John Smith is being taken back to England to be healed from his gunshot wound. And I just love that shot at the end. They showed the original sketch, I believe, that led to that shot at the end of the movie and I just loved it and I wanted to paint it in a colored version. Also, I'm not sure why, but on camera, I feel like this painting looks very pixelated or patchy, but in person it looks a lot smoother. So I don't know if that's my camera picking up weirdly or if it's the lighting, but in person it looks a lot better. But I just really love the way this painting turned out. I only wanted to outline Pocahontas, the cliff that she's on, and the leaves and the boat, and then obviously the heading, and I wanted to leave the rest in this kind of full wash of colors. And I love how it turned out. I was so nervous at first because I've never painted something so abstract looking, because this isn't really that detailed at all, and the water surface is like a soft pink so I was really nervous and I didn't really know what I was doing but I just looked at the screenshot of the movie and I just tried my best and I really loved how this turned out. With the heading I basically looked up a Pocahontas font online because I really loved the way they had her name at the beginning of the movie and then I just typed in September and printed it out and then that's how I transferred it. Oh yeah also if you're new to my channel I've been transferring a lot of Disney images to my journal recently because it's just a lot faster and that way I can capture the movie and get everything I want on paper. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. I'll still be posting more princess setups for the rest of this year, and I have an idea for what I'm going to do for next year's theme, so make sure you don't miss it. So the main reason I wanted to do Pocahontas for September is simply because of the leaves and the wind. I literally feel like this movie perfectly welcomes autumn, and I just really wanted those types of colors and out of the remaining princesses that I have, none of them really fit September quite like Pocahontas does, so that's why I decided to pick her for this theme. And now we're onto my calendar page. This page was a little bit weird, so I obviously wanted to do Grandmother Willow. She's an amazing part of Pocahontas' story. But I didn't want to do a close-up of her face and I wanted to capture what it was like for Pocahontas to be sat there talking with her. But I feel like her face looks really freaky on my grandmother Willow because the one in the movie, when they show it from this far away, it's kind of blurry and I had to make up the details of her face myself and I don't think I did the best job of it and she looks a little bit weird. But that's why I decided to paint Pocahontas there because I thought it would make the scene look better and the focus would be more on her than Grandmother Willow. Also for the tree trunk here, I had no idea what I was doing. I just know that I needed to make it blue and have like a mint type of tint to it because that's how it looked in the movie. When you watch Pocahontas and you pay attention to the elements, you'll notice how colorful this movie is. At first I really just thought it was about the nature, but the nature's colors are definitely over exaggerated in this movie and it works really well and I loved it, but I feel like you just don't really notice it at first and once I did notice it, I was like wow, this theme has to have a lot more color than I was expecting it to, but I love how it turned out. And yeah, here's me painting Pocahontas. Her face doesn't look the best either because it is literally so small 
You can see next to the dot grid spacing how small her face had to be and I tried my, pe my best but I literally don't think I had a pen small enough to be able to fix her face details so I did the best that I could and then I moved on to the next spread. So for this positivity log and mood tracker, I knew that this was going to be the fastest thing ever because I literally just wanted to have leaves that I colored in for the mood tracker. I feel like it fits full so well and it matches Pocahontas really well so I just drew the leaves and then I just decided to paint this little blue swirl so that it looks like the wind is blowing the leaves around and I think this is going to look really cute by the time I filled it out at the end of the month. So on to the next spread, I feel like I really need to explain this painting because it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So this is my habit tracker and weight tracker, and normally I like to dedicate this page to the villain if I can, but I really hate Radcliffe. He's such a horrible villain. I mean, technically he's a good villain, but he's really horrible. And in the movie, there was a part where um, some of Pocahontas' people were in the hut around the fire and Kekata, the shaman, shows them this vision of what the invaders are like and in the fire we see these depictions of soldiers with guns and I think arrows, sorry not arrows, spears and I basically wanted to paint that but it didn't end up looking that good at all and I didn't know how to fix it. This is probably one of the first times when I've painted something in my bullet journal that I didn't know how to fix and so I just left it because I didn't know how to make it any better. I could have made the smoke more blurry but I don't know. It still gave me the vibe of the villain without having to paint Radcliffe or anything actually of him because he's really ugly and horrible and I don't want to look at that in my journal. But anyway, on to my next spread. This is my finances page and my brain dump and I've had this theme of on my brain dump page always painting the castle related to the princess and obviously for the princesses that don't have a castle I have to do something different and this is the hut that we see Pocahontas and her dad go into when she welcomes him home from his trip and I don't know exactly what this hut is we don't actually know if this is where she sleeps where he sleeps or whether this is a place where they have meetings because there are many different huts there and they don't really focus on it so I'm not quite sure what this building is meant to be exactly but it seems to be the more important building out of the others so that's why I wanted to paint that one on that page. And so now I'm onto my productivity log spread and I don't always do this with every princess but I've kind of gotten into this habit of painting the animal sidekicks on this page. It's not really something I've planned and I don't do it every month but I have done it for quite a few of them and I couldn't resist with Pocahontas because I just love Miko and Flit so much. They're so cute and Miko reminds me of a cat, the cat's behavior and none of the Disney princesses have a cat as a sidekick so I just had to paint him because he's adorable and I painted him holding a biscuit because I thought it was so cute when he liked the British biscuits I just thought it was hilarious and I tried to paint Flit looking angry because he was always angry in the movie and disapproving of things and that's how I wanted to portray them in their natural forms. And so now we're on to the first weekly setup. For the rest of the weeklies I already set them up off camera but I'm just showing you how I do it here. And for this one I really wanted to paint Pocahontas and Nakoma. But I didn't paint their faces because again I'm trying not to paint too much of faces and characters in these setups. I want to focus on the elements and the scenes in the films and I really wanted to paint this scene right at the beginning of the movie when Nakoma goes to get Pocahontas and says your father's back and she jumps into the water and then they start fighting under the boat. I just thought it was so cute and so fun. And I feel like Pocahontas is the only princess who actually has a real friend. Most of the princesses are always isolated or they don't really have any friends or they're too busy for friends. And Pocahontas, we actually see her with a friend and it's a really beautiful friendship and you can tell that they really love and care for each other. And they don't blame each other either. I loved when 
I mean, I don't love this, but when Kokulum died and they were both blaming themselves for it happening and neither one of them blamed each other. And I just love that. Like when you watch that scene, you just know that they have a real friendship and that they're always there for each other. And that's something rare to see in a Disney film. And so I really wanted to capture that moment. So for the second weekly, I really wanted to paint these two eagles. I don't know if you guys remember in the song, Colors of the Wind, um, Pocahontas is teaching John Smith about all these things in nature and how to see everything. And they both lift up two eagles. Um, Pocahontas lifts up the gray one and John Smith picks up the orangey yellow one. And they both, um, f not throw, but they kind of like lift their arms up and the eagles fly and then they go and sit on this tree. And then they show a mirror shot of Pocahontas and John Smith basically doing the same thing with their faces, like they're posing the same way as the eagles. And I just thought it was really beautiful imagery for the film and very symbolic. And it was a way to show that you're one in the same, even if you look different. And I just loved it. And I really wanted to capture that. Also, I really loved painting this tree branch. I don't know why. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at trees. If you guys have seen my previous struggles, you know that trees are my weakness and I felt like I did really well on this one. So for my third weekly, I had to paint this image of their hands touching. I remember this scene so much when she is running from him because he was um, literally about to shoot her and then he says, oh, let me help you out the boat, which did kind of bother me. I mean, John Smith is not the best guy in the world at all. He's not that great, but it was very sweet that he wanted to give her a chance and talk to her, even though I'm pretty sure the only reason is because he thought she was attractive, but we're just gonna pretend that that's not the case. And I just really liked this moment when she held out her hand and placed it in his, and then there was the leaves and the magic and the sparkles flying around. And it was like the music and the colors of the wind, they were just like singing to her and she felt like she was making the right choice. And this was very symbolic too, because her dad is not gonna want her to do this, obviously. And she was just literally listening to her heart. And I wanted to capture that because that's a very classic Disney princess thing to listen to your heart. And so for the last weekly, I really wanted to paint the compass and I decided to paint her hands holding the compass as well because I had a lot of space to fill up and I didn't wanna paint the compass even bigger. But this was right at the end, not right at the end, but right before the battle was about to happen and she's holding the compass and it's meant to represent the spinning arrow from her dream. And that was something that kind of had a full circle. It was brought up at the beginning of the movie because she described the dream to her grandmother and then it came back again at the end and she felt like the compass was telling her what direction to go and what choice to make. And I just thought it was, again, beautiful imagery and very symbolic, and I wanted to paint that here. Also, I'm sure you can see me correcting my painting with a white gel pen. That's because I didn't really like the tone that I gave her skin, and so I had to use a lot of water to remove a top layer, and then I went over it in a color that I preferred. But by the time I had had that much water, the outline of her hands had like paint spilling everywhere so I just covered it in white gel pen and I'm just pretending that didn't happen. And so this is my final spread, my monthly check-in and monthly review and I literally just wanted to draw leaves and I hate that I didn't outline them first in pencil because I feel like three of the leaves are way too big and I didn't mean to make them that big but I went straight in with pen and so now I have to live with it but it's okay, it's nice and quick and colorful and then I added some leaves to the finances spread as well. And so here we are at the final flip through. If you made it this far in the video, please leave a leaf or leaves emoji down below so that I know you're still here. And thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you liked the setup of Pocahontas. I really do. And definitely subscribe to make sure you see my next setups. And I'm really excited. I've made a decision of what I'm gonna do for next year's theme. And you guys will have to wait till January to find out. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.